remotely connect into a to a network or an interface. And who remembers how to code it on iOS? Just roughly. Go on, Eddie. Quickly. You remember? Not really. Why did you say so so then? Yeah, it doesn't okay. like so so. So, are you able to see my screen? Yep. Yes. And are you able to hear the voice? No. No. Telnet is okay in a control line okay. access. The remote access protocols you will use will likely either be Telnet or SSH. And just to reiterate, Telnet is okay in a controlled lab environment, but it is best practice for real world access to only use SSH. In addition to the steps that we looked at for VTY line access troubleshooting, we do want to be aware of some additional considerations that are specific to SSH. First, in general, with either Telnet or SSH, you can perform the VTY line troubleshooting that First things, can you hear me? So VTY lines, virtual lines, the only virtual lines that we had on devices, be it router, be it switch, be it firewall, yeah? Yes, so VTY lines, virtual lines, not physically there, and we are using it for creating remote connection to devices and then start configuring them. Like Anaida, for instance, today she's working from home. What if I ask her to change something, configure something, implement something on router switches, firewalls? Yeah, she can make a connection to any of these devices, provided that you have enabled SSH and them, and then start configuring them from home, as if she is standing next to the device in the rack room. So that was the whole idea. We have two protocols, Telnet versus SSH, for doing this. Which one is secure? SSH. SSH. And Telnet sends stuff in clear text, in plain text, not encrypted. Meaning that if you manage as an attacker or network professional to connect a Wireshark, a switch connected to a Wireshark machine, you are able to see all the communication transmission on plain text. So that we already looked at, and that includes verifying reachability to the IP address of the device, making sure credentials are in place and that the line login method lists are correct. Also, check for any attached access control lists on the VTY lines, and you'll want to verify that IP addresses, protocols, and port numbers are not being blocked, as we outlined in the previous video. As for SSH-specific issues, you want to check to make sure that the correct version of SSH is specified in your configuration. By default on many devices, SSH versions 1 and 2 are both enabled. But if you take a look at the running configuration and see the output IP SSH version followed by a number 1 or a number 2, then that's only going to allow that particular specified version. So if you have a client connecting with SSH version two and you have only version one allowed on the device, this is obviously a problem. You can check that. So that's enough just to recap what it was and how it works. You all have 
LinkedIn Learning. Uh, it is provided by you, by the university, the contract that you have at the university. And I hope you use it to the max for your benefit. Again, one of the free services that you have, thanks to the university while you are a student. So now let's move on and let's go through some of the practical. So everyone has opened the lab file. Uh, it's in front of you. Raise your hand if you don't know the, which lab you're talking about. So. Let's start. The first very one, the first uh, step. Is part one, part A. Configure IP addresses on PCA. Uh, Leon, what should I do? For what the start one? Part on one A. What should I do? So click on the PCA. Uh huh. Uh, your screen is blank at the moment, sir. But you click on PCA, and if you wanted to, can con... you see? Can you see my screen, by the way? A uh, nice blank screen for me. Can you see it now? Yeah, now I can see it. Then you go to desktop. Uh huh. And then IP config, and then you can configure the subnet mask, IP address, and default gateway. And tell me, what should I put here? So for PCA, the IP address was 172.16.1.10. And what is the mask? 255.255.255.255. Uh, what else do I need to provide here? Default gateway. Thank you. But are you Leon? But thank you, Stephen. That's correct. So default gateway, yeah? Yeah, 172. Remember, at the end of the day, when they say configure IP addresses on PCs and machines, laptops, whatever, it doesn't mean that they only need IP and subnet mask. Well, you give them a name, but you also need to tell them how to, re re how to reach remote networks. What happens if the destination IP is not within the same subnet? Yeah, that's why we need default gateway. So what is the default gateway? Yeah. It's the first point of contact, right? Or the exit point. So it'd be the rear. Uh, so that's who, 172. Who is using that? Stephen, can you show Thorne how to enable the... So. I asked this question thrown earlier and you didn't raise your hand. Why? Yeah, find it quickly. So, Leon, what is the default? 172. Gateway? Yeah. 16. Yeah. 1.1. 1 .1. So everyone needs to follow me exactly like this. Yeah, so as we are putting commands here, you put the commands. But you don't go any step forward because then if you get error, we can't help. Everyone happy with this step? What should I do now, Leon? Leon. Uh, does it say to save? Or well, I think you can just close it. Uh, it should save. Good, good. I, I wanted to say this thing. So we don't have any save button as such here. Once you input all those uh, addresses, you just close it and it saves there. Yeah? So if I reopen it, if I go to IP configuration, and if my machine responds and does not become so yeah every information is already there so let's have part one a done console into rta which is basically the router for now from the terminal on pca which is our pc uh luca Guys, be quick, yeah? Because if you are not quick, then you're going to do everything self-study at home. 
Luca. Sit next to Steven. And Luca. Can't hear you. While Luca is sorting out his audio issue, Pratik. Uh, you'd have to go into the terminal for PC. So before that, I'm talking about consoling here. Which one is the console cable? The blue one. And what does the blue one or the console connection do? Uh, in terms, in terms of uh, connection type. When do we usually console to something? I'm not sure when you'd like what the use is. So we console whenever we are standing next to the device physically and we want to configure it. In other words, it is called in band. Sorry, it is called out of band mechanism for configuration. We have two categories of connections when it comes to configuring devices, in-band mechanisms and out-of-band mechanisms. A very good question for interviews. Out-of-band mechanisms to configure networking devices is when you are physically there, you have a console cable standing in the rack room, connected this blue cable to the console port of the device. Unlike VTY console ports, are physically there. If you remember from last year in rack rooms, we were able to see the physical console put there. And then you start configuring them. Whereas inbound mechanisms are the mechanisms that you use the current underlying network in order to get connection to that device and start configuring them. Can someone give me an example of VT? Uh, well, I gave you dance. So VTY lines are, which I just explained what they are, are an, an example of in-band mechanism for configuration, over which protocols like Telnet, like SSH, can operate. So, Pratik, console into RTA from terminal and PCA, what should I do? Uh, you should then, Click on PCA and open the terminal. Open the terminal. Yes. So can someone tell me what packet tra what packet tracer is simulating here? Not someone pratic. In reality, what do we see instead of this? I give you a hint. Terminal emulation software or terminal emulation program. Can you give me an example of them? Uh, is it Putty? Putty, well done. Putty, for instance, if you remember, Putty does exactly the same thing that here Packet Tracer is simulating with this terminal program. Yeah. So we leave it stuff here by default and click OK. What should I do now, Pratik? Uh, just, just click Enter, and you're there. Now, Pratik is going to tell us, according to the prompt that he's seeing, which environment of this device I am in at the moment. According to the prompt that you see on devices, Cisco IOS is in can be on different in on different environment, on different shells. What is this current shell? Which mute uh, is, is user, IOS user, user exec. exec user exec mute? Which the sign is the greater sign, yeah? And how can I change that, Pratik? 
Uh, if you type in enable. Enable or just EN. But as you remember from networking course, I always say put the full command. Enable. And what is the current mute now? Uh, is it privilege exec? Pr privilege exec mute. What does that mean? With user exec mute, I am very limited in terms of commands that I can uh, input and tasks that the operating system iOS can finish. Whereas with privilege exec mute, I have more options. Like what? Like show commands. Many of these show commands, you can't run them on user exec, while you are able to run them on privilege exec mute. And what if I want to go to a higher privilege uh, mute? Pratik. Uh, you'd write conf, conf t. And what does conf t stand for? Uh, configure terminal. For the sake of certification, be it academic certification or in Pearson Industrial uh, Certification, Pearson View Centers, make sure that you know the full command. What I do usually instead of just writing conf t, which of course works, I usually use tap as I am entering a command. So keep pressing tap and it auto completes the, co the command for you. The advantage is that it is like a reminder for you for what the full command was. Yeah, but of course, professional network engineers or professional network security engineers, they only go with uh, short and forms. So configure terminal and now you see the prompt changes. And now you see you have parentheses. Yeah, and this prompt shows that we are in config uh, terminal configuration, global configuration mood. So the, the mood is called global configuration mood. Now, thank you, Pratik. Uh, Luca, has it been sorted? Luca? Not yet. I've got a question, sir. Bear with me. Okay, Addy, quickly. So you see for the um, certification exam, can we what like can we use tab to get a full command or that function for everything, is for everything on iOS, as soon as you enter the very first initial letters, the rest can be auto completed by pressing tab. Yeah, just give um, it a go on even during the, the exam. Even even mm -hmm. what? Even during the exam, like the certification. Oh, exam. sorry, you're yeah. asking about the exam. No, yeah, in, the, okay. in, the ex, in the exam, I want you to remember full things, similar to official exams. Winnie, unmute. Yeah, yes, sir. Tell me about step six. Uh, sorry, step C. Configure the host name on RTA. I can't really remember off the top of my head, sir. So, uh, Hamza, step C. Unmute, bring down your mic. Guys, we don't have time like this, yeah? So be quick and look at that shiny lap safe. And I'm waiting for your thank you messages. Do you guys really think that it's easy? I request and they buy it and they bring it and install it. That's and you easy. don't appreciate one million meetings that I go with seniors begging and begging and begging and justifying and justifying and justifying and filling out forms after forms after forms up until they getting approval. So go on. I forgot. Is it, is it R1? What is the command? Yeah, I forgot the command. Hamza, what is the command to change the host name? Regardless of what we're going to change it to. Something R1. Something? Something R1, right? No, look, R1, R2, Vahid, RTA is just, just a name. Yeah, yeah, it's like a variable name. But what is the command to assign that value? Uh, Timmy. Is it a uh, host name RTA? So we go with host name RTA, but where, which mute should I be in in order to issue this command? 
uh, the configuration modes. Global configuration. Say the name correctly. So is it RTA? Yeah. Uh, yeah. OK, so everyone should have done up to this step. As soon as I enter this command, you can see that the name has changed from the default router to RTA now. Now, configure IP addressing on RTA. Timmy, go on and enable interface. What should I do? Step D. Um, I can't really remember right now. Let's do it together because this is not something about remembering something. Look at the scenario, Timmy. We have one PC which is connected to a switch, which is connected to a router. Yeah. One thing that I want everyone to do right now is this to go to your packet tracer, go to options, go to preferences, and then click on not only show device model labels, but always show port labels as well. And then close it. What happens? is that now you can see the port labels are added to your view yeah which makes work easier so fast internet zero on the pc is connected to fast internet zero one on the switch and gigabit zero slash one on the switch is connected to gigabit zero slash zero slash zero on the router forget about this blue cable why this is a console connection. This does not have anything to do with the data port. It goes directly from the console port and the PC or laptop, whatever, to the console port on the router or switch or firewall. So now tell me, Timmy. Hello, yep. Where were we? Uh, step D. So, Tell me how to assign in router interface, which you can see now is gigabit zero slash zero slash zero, an IP address, and enable it. Uh, so you need to type an interface and then uh, the interface. Port. What is the oh, port? Sorry. Uh, so G uh, zero slash gigabit zero idem. Slash. So I just put yeah. GI oh, okay. and then I click on tab, it gets auto completed. And then I say zero, and then I say zero, and I say zero. And then I click enter. Right away, you can see now that the mute has changed from global configuration mute into interface configuration mute with dash IF here. Now tell me, what is the command I need to put here? So it's IP space address, and then uh, the IP address in the table. So it's what one. Is it? 172.16.1.1. And? And the subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0. Uh, and what is the equivalent in decimal notation? Uh, what do you mean exactly, sorry? So if you remember subnet masks, we have a slash notation and we have full notation. With full notation, we say 255.255.0.0, for instance. But what is the equivalent, a slash notation for showing subnet mass? Uh, this one in particular is slash 24. Slash 24, good. So, because if you, if you, are, if you are about to assign IPv6 address to this router interface, IPv6 addresses, they don't accept dotted decimal subnet mask as such. Because first of all, we show masks in IPv6 in hexadecimal numbers, not in decimal numbers. And secondly, we use a slash notation like a slash 64 for IPv6 address assignments uh, to interface. Now, I click enter. What else I need to do? Uh, I think you need to type the no shutdown command to save the settings. Not to save the settings, not at all. 
Why do I need to enter no shutdown? To uh, turn on the, the interface. Which interface? Router interface. Switch interfaces by default are on. Whereas router interfaces by default are disabled. When you connect something to a switch port, you don't need to go to that switch port and issue no shutdown. Whereas on routers, they are shut down by default. You need to go there and make it, make them enabled by issuing no shutdown. So I assign no shutdown. What does the uh, comment here tells me? Tell me. It tells me that this interface gigabit zero 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 slash zero, it was down. Winnie, put the phone away. It was down, and now it has changed the state to up. Now you can see that it's been enabled. Okay. Apparently we are good so far, but what if I want to uh, exit this mute and go back to global configuration mute? Timmy, uh, which command type, to put? You type exit. And what if I don't want to do this? Instead, I want to go back right away to privilege exec mute. Uh, the end command? End. So exit goes back one level, whereas end takes you down right away to privilege exec mute. So let's go with exit. And now let's move on to. Uh, Vinny again, Vinny. Yep. Which command to put in order to encrypt all the passwords? I know that it is written in front of you in the lab sheet, so thank you for being genius, but I want you to practice it if you can remember it, or at least try to memorize it now and give it a go on the packet tracer itself. So, Vinny, which command to enter for encrypting the passwords? It should just be service password encryption. What is the importance of entering this command? I what does this command do? Seems Look, so. Like in the exam, if I tell you how to encrypt this and you give me the answer, you're not going to get any mark unless you justify it and explain it. Like this. What does this command do and what is the significance of doing it? Why should I encrypt passwords? Because only me who set the password knows that password what it is. But why should I encrypt it as well? Here. Uh, because if you don't encrypt it, there's a way to show it in the CLI so the password will be displayed. In how, plain text. how would it be displayed? Give me a, an attack scenario whereby those passwords become revealed to the attacker. Well, if they haven't been encrypted, then and a hacker gets into the system, then how how do they get into that system to be able to see those passwords that you have encrypt uh, that you have stored unencrypted? All right. Let's say, for instance, the in the network, they done telnet communication, for instance, without any communication. Yeah, then yeah. all messages will be in plain text, so they'll be if, able to see passwords and things. If your network engineer is stupid enough to enable your network on telnet, or even SSH, yeah, we are learning SSH today, but the most secure networks won't allow configuration outside of the enterprise at all. Yeah, though it's secure, still not allowed. Or another scenario, we leave everything, every password on plain text. The attacker goes into the rack room while no one is here and just consult it and just do show running config. And all the passwords come in plain text. Now, while another question that you may get instead of what does, what is the command for doing this or that? How does service password encryption command encrypt those passwords? Which algorithm does iOS use to encrypt those passwords? And what do we mean by encryption here? 
So why I am doing this lab with you step by step? Because if you remember from networking module that you have done with me, I always keep saying that even my mom's grandmom's grand 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 mom is able to finish this lab. They just open a file, look at the instruction sheet, enter some commands there. Click enter, use show command, and they see the result. But does that give any privilege to my grand 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 grandma? No, unless she, God bless her, remembers what does service password encryption command do, meaning that which algorithm does iOS use in order to encrypt? And what do we mean by encryption here? Now, can someone help my grand 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 mom? Yes, it, it uses MD5 by default, a uh, hashing al algorithm. Good. It uses MD5. And is it really an encryption algorithm? Is MD5 really an encryption algorithm? It's a or hashing it algorithm. It's a hashing algorithm. What's the difference? Well, hashing uh, is. Um, well, hashing basically uh, it's responsible for integrity of the data. I would say we mainly use hashing as a digital signature, meaning that we create an output of a fixed length for any arbitrary length input, and then we store that fixed length. Because mathematically, hashing is a one-way function, no one can guess what the input is if even they have access to the output. Because a hash of a one terabyte file with MD5 is going to result in 128-bit output. While the same thing happens even if the input is one kilobyte. Again, the output is going to be 128 bytes. Sorry, uh, 128 bits. Regardless of the length for the input, the output is going always to be the same. Same in the, sen in, the sen in the sense that they're going to be the same size. And from the output, you cannot convert and reach back to the input. So this is how you answer for what service password encryption does, not just by saying, you know what, it encrypts password. So let's move on. Let's go to Stephen. Can you hear me? Yep. How to set minimum password lengths? Um, you just put the command um, security password min length, then you so just before we put that, let's put the previous one. So service password encryption. I believe everyone has done up to step F with me and your packet tracer. I'm going to ask you later to show it to me. And now tell me about setting minimum password length. So this minimum length, minimum password length, what is it used for? Is it only for a uh, console password that the minimums should be set to this number? Steven? Um, I believe it's all passwords. All passwords, like what? Uh, Give me a couple of examples of passwords that we usually see within these scenarios on routers, switches, firewalls, etc. cetera. Um, passwords to like access certain privileges. So we have enable password whereby mm. you want to issue enable command, which takes you from user exec mode into privilege exec mode. This is how you should answer me. This is an example. Another password is the console password. So you don't leave the console port open for any attacker to just pop into your rack room, grab a laptop, connect it with a console cable to any device that they wish, and then they are there in the device. Yeah, you secure it with a password. Two examples. Can someone give me another example of the passwords where we set them? 
VT Wildlines. VT Wildlines. VT Wildlines. Later you will see how we assign passwords to SSH or Telnet. So can someone tell me how we are assigning passwords to SSH to VT Wildlines? Give me two different mechanisms to assign passwords to VT Wildlines. Hmm. Very has very you go into interview yeah. shining question. Go on. You go into the uh wait for Eddie first. Eddie, go on. Um go to give the give me two categories. I don't want commands. Two categories. two categories of configuring passwords for SSH. Um you can you can so going for the global configuration mode and point in line VTY zero is fifteen. I'm not asking about pass about the commands, Leon. RSA DSA. Is it I'm not asking about the algorithm, uh, Alex. Two different mechanisms. I'm going to say RSA as well. Uh, um... So the first mechanism or the first category is when you assign username passwords locally on the local database on that device for which, mute yourself, for which you are going to protect SSH or VTY or any other thing. The second category is when you have triple A server in your domain. You tell SSH here, and I show you today where to put that command. You tell SSH that you know what? Whoever try to connect to you, whenever you want to ask for their password, check their username and password, not against the local database that you have on this device, but instead against the AAA server, which resides, I don't know, on this IP, 1.1.1.1. If that happens, then that device becomes transparent. Think about it. Yeah, I'm not making up these words. Becomes transparent in terms of who authenticates the user or who authenticates that remote connection that wants to get to that device. Yeah. Otherwise, if you use local database, then of course you're going to be in charge as the authenticator to see whether you're going to establish that connection, remote connection or not. So, Stephen, what is the pass what is the command? Security passwords min slash length ten dash yeah. security passwords what um min dash length ten and what does ten mean here the um, characters yeah number of characters that you are yeah now Steven is very sharp I'm going to continue set a strong secret password as well. First of all, tell me, what are you assigning password to? What are you protecting here in this step? Steven? Um, you're protecting the console zero, I believe. No, the, the that's exactly the common misunderstanding that students have. If you are assigning password for console, then you should be under the console configuration mute. You should have already said line console zero, which changes the prompt. And then under that new environment, which is line environment, yeah, it says config that hyphen line, then you assign password, which operates against any console connection attempts uh, to your device, which is again out of band mechanism with the console blue cable, console cable, the guy is standing next to the device, et cetera, et cetera, all those stories that we have gone through. Here, you are going to set a very secure password to what? When going, can I answer? Yeah, go on, Alexi. What's the answer? Can you go from user exec mode to user privilege mode? 
And you use uh, enable secret. Enable secret. And tell me what is the command. Enable secret. What if instead of enable secret, I put enable password? Uh, Previously, it... iOS was allowing you only to in, to enter enable password instead of enable secret. And both commands, they do the same in a sense that both of them are assigning a password to your enable mute, in other words, into your privilege exec mute, where you are issuing enable command to get you from user exec mute to uh, privilege exec mute. However, one of them is less secure because it's in plain text, and that is enable password. And that's why we never use enable password. So regardless of service password encryption, because service password encryption definitely encrypts whatever you are entering from now on, does not leave anything in plain text. However, for top recommendation, still we never use enable password. Instead, we say enable secret. If I say enable secret, and if I put my password, Vahid, V-A-H-I-D, do you think that it's going to accept it? No. Why? Because we said the minimum length for 10 characters. Great. So instead I say enable secret Vahid Vahid, which makes it 10. Okay. And S sub H, I want Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. What does a step H do? Where is your you're following the labs? Yeah. Go on. What does a step H tell us? So disable DNS lookup, which disables uh I'm not sure about this one actually. Raise your hand if you know what it does, not you, Alexi. You were I think top marking network concepts. Am I right? That's why you keep raising your hand. Alexia, yet, you are not certified yet. Which basically means you are burning your best days similar to this guy or that guy, which I'm not going to point to. Go on. No one? Yeah, go on. Does it mean the router can't communicate with a DNS server? Correct and wrong. So correct and wrong. Why? Because, well, tell me an example, which have, which if I don't put this command, no IP domain lookup, what would happen? What is the negative uh, impact that I may get? This is a question that only people who have done labs in the last half, a year and a half, Basically, only those are able to answer me. And it's a good indication of who has done nothing and who has done something. If I don't put this command, what would happen practically? So this is not a lecture or a slide or anything like that. It's something that only you understand if you are working on the labs. One. Would it be that it interacts with all DNS servers? So anybody trying to connect to it? Give it me a practical example. I'm not after concept here. Okay. What, what, what goes wrong if you don't enter this command? Then, for instance, Wait. a website is able to gain access to your computer to send packets. Even simpler answer than that, but a practical one. Add it. I'm not sure, but uh, let's say people are not able to look up like the um, the main information for the. No, I don't know some sort of information. Alexi. So, yeah. So basically, if you're working from the terminal and you mistype any command that the, ah. by default, the router will attempt to uh, communicate with the DNS server. I like that. Yeah, so it, it means that he is the only student. Un unfortunately, that has done sub lamps. So if I put. A show command here in privilege exec mode, like show run, for instance, then I can see some 
output for my current running configuration file. But what if I misspell this? And instead of show, I say show like this, and then running config. Not like that, but as soon as I just put show, it misspell. What does this uh, prompt, or what's about, sorry, what does this output tell me? What does this output tell me? I have misspelled something, which is not a keyword within that iOS. iOS thinks that I am calling a domain name because it's not a preset keyword. And it starts resolving that show with extra W to that domain name, as if it's like Vahid.com. He thinks that he needs to contact a DNS and translate that domain name, whatever they think that they are domain name, they are not, to an IP and then contacting that uh, domain. Yeah? This resolution, this translation takes time. And because people tend to misspell things, and in many scenarios, you are not actually using any of these domains, though for SSH, you, you see today that we need a definite domain name. Therefore, we issue no IP domain lookup, which basically makes iOS not to spend time to resolving any of these misspelled commands or anything like that, because we are not basically relying on DNS here. That's why I said, this is one of the things that shows who has done stuff because this is something that you don't understand unless you have done laps that we keep saying, do it, do it. So what is the command? No IP domain lookup. Now, if I go back and if I do show with this, then right away it comes back to me and say, you know what? You don't have such a thing. I'm not going to waste your time resolving this using DNS. Now, set the domain name. This set the domain name has local significance for SSH. This is not one of the frequent, uh, frequently steps that we follow usually. It's only required because today's lab is about SSH and how to configure SSH. So, uh, Elvis, how to assign, how to configure that? Elvis. Yes, yes. Uh, to configure it, the well, we're on J right now. That's I. Yes. Step I. Oh, step I. Still on. The, yeah. So you would write IP domain name and write the IP. Yeah, domain, domain name. Name. And in this what? instance, we're writing netsec.com. Yes, they just made up the, a domain name. Yeah. A, a domain uh, name for the sake of this lab. Now, everyone, open up this link. What if I want to see details depending on the platforms on how to configure SSH, how to verify it? All of these stuff are very well documented in details in docs, documents that you can find on Cisco website itself. Yeah, you can see many of these commands, especially for now that we are going through SSH configuration. They were configuration commands, the verification commands, the troubleshooting, the more scenarios, et cetera, et cetera, here. So back to our So let me ask you a question based on the document that you have opened in front of you. How many SSH connection? Can a device accept? Let's say I have 
two network administrators. I have Annie and Ivan. Let's say I have three administrators. I've got Timmy, Ivan, and Annie. And let's say I have one million administrators. All are going to connect to this device. What is the max that a single device can accept in terms of SSH connections? Just go through the document. It is clearly set within this document. It's just a question to make sure that you, you guys read instead of chat and try to be cool. I think I should have gone with a lighter blue for lap safe. Don't you think that it's too blue? This is when your course director is colorblind. Tell me the answer. You know that I'm not going to compromise on your teaching, meaning that if we don't cover slides, you cover it at home yourself. Look up. Yeah, just tell me. Well done, well done. So Luca is saying that it is limited to the number of VTY lines that you have. Because if you think about it, SSN and Telnet, they operate over VTY uh, virtual lines. Can someone, including Luca, tell me how to count, how to see how many VTY lines does this particular machine support anyone on your packet tracer in front of you is it the router we are in at the moment yes yeah? so how many vty lines is support on that router could you show line vty so let me see no but you issue it and tell me why Anyone? This is again another example of who has done previous labs, really. So if I go to here, can you see my screen? Yeah, go on, Luca. Shout. You say five. Where do you get five from? I'm, I'm not talking about the default, I'm saying how many meaning that the max, because the, connect, the question was how many SSH connections can be a handle at a time on this particular model? Anyone? So remember that we had a very handy uh, command in iOS, and not on, only in iOS, in Linux. Basically, iOS is based on Unix system, and Linux itself is based on Unix system. So we had that in all these families, which are at the end of the day, the same family. And that command is question mark. Yeah, question mark works like man in Linux, man for manual. If you don't know what a command does in Linux, you just do, you just man it, yeah? And it gives you a, a information, limitation, examples, etc. Here, in front of line, VTY, if I put question mark, it tells me the input that I can have here. A very good hint for your exam. Though you're coming to your exam with 100% uh, readiness in terms of you memorize everything, you learn everything, you have done some hands-on activities, etc., etc., you may forget one comment. Just put it in the iOS, put question mark, and see what the correct arguments are. Yeah? So how many lines does it accept here? Shout. Five VT lines. No, five is the default. <clears throat> no, there's... It's 16. Because it's 16, because it's 0 to 15, which makes, which makes it 16. One mistake that students make, uh, usually is that because they are just like my grand 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 grandma 
they just follow the steps and commands that they see in the instruction sheet. So that says zero to four or zero to five or whatever, which makes it four or five, whatever. But I'm asking about the max. That's a common thing that we put on the iOS, zero to four, which makes it five. I thought you were talking about you, RTA. You, you said how many disagree. VT lines were, No, no, you said how many VT lines were in the RTA. So I was saying four. No, oh. even on even on RTA, go to conf D. Yes, I'm still in RTA. Go to conf D, put line comes full uh, line VTY, put question mark. No. Don't rush it. Line space what VTY space question mark. It says you can enter from zero to fifteen. All are acceptable on that single model, which makes it sixteen different options. Yeah. So Even if, remember guys, if I had asked you to do this lab yourself for the first, I don't know, eight, nine steps that we have gone, how many minutes would you spend? Probably two minutes. Put this, 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 enter Vahid, come and see we have done it. But this is not how you do the lab. This is how you do the lab. So now, step J. Uh, Michael. Uh, hello. What am I doing here in step J? Um, you're creating a user for um, the device. User for the device? What do you mean? Answer me as if you are a cyber ops associate or network security certified. Um, you're setting technician. up a username for your device and you're configuring a password for that username as well. And what is that username and password set are going to be useful? What are they going to be used for? Is it for the different VTY connections? Uh, so Michael is going to mute himself and uh, what Michael meant is this, where he told us earlier that we have two different categories or classes for assigning passwords to many things, including SSH, which is our topic today. One is when you store that combination of username and passwords locally on the device, and one for when you redirect every authentication request to AAA server. This command here, username, password, username, secret, is the first method. You start populating your local database on that single device itself with two columns, usernames, passwords. And it, sh it can be uh, many, it's not just one. Yeah, I can have username, Anaida, password this. I can have username, Ivan, password this. Yeah, so these are to be used later in SSH if I'm not going to use AAA, but instead I'm going to use local database to authenticate users. Michael, what to put here? Username, any underscore user, and for the password secrets. Any so I put password. username Vahid. Again, here I can put password. Yeah, but I'm not going to put password. I'm going to use secret. Why, Michael? Similar to enable secret, enable password commands. Luca, I know that you know the answer, but you don't have mic. Anyone else? What is the difference between username secret than username password? Seeker is encrypted, whereas password is just plain text. Ah, uh, had you not answered this question, I would have done suicide now. So username secret, pass, uh, how many? A letters for my password should I have? 10. If I do 9, I get error, see? So 10. And then that was added to my local database and can be used later. Now, step K, L, and M 
are the actual configuration for enabling SSH on that device. So let's go to my polite student. Who do you think is my polite student? Me. Definitely not you. <laughs> Where are the names? Eric. Eric is polite, but not Eric. Milo. Hello. Hi, Milo. See, that's why I said he's polite. Okay, <laughs> go on. Uh, Milo, Sep, K. What are we doing here? Um, it says we're generating a 1024-bit RSA key or keys. So remember RSA keys, yeah? The last session of first semester for this module, we have gone through cryptography. And guys, we have a session here, yeah? So we talked about RSA. And if you remember, we said that RSA has different use cases. Here, we are using RSA algorithm to create a general purpose key to be used along with RSA algorithm for encrypting SSH traffic. Because if you remember, SSH is going to be a secure protocol un unlike Telnet. So that key can be of any size. But again, back to our cryptography session, if you remember, I said that the general rule of thumb here is that the longer the key, the more secure the protocol is. Guys. So. Where were we? Uh, here, the first step for SSH is to create that RSA key. And as I said earlier, the longer the key, the more security you have. Remember, these days, for many of these protocols, the secrecy, or let's say the security, does not depend anymore on the algorithm, because any algorithm at some point can be broken. I don't say the word any, scientifically is not correct, but most of them. Yeah? The secrecy is that to make it more difficult for the attacker to break into the algorithm by guessing that password. And that happens only if you have assigned longer and longer passwords or longer keys in terms of these, these protocols like RSA. And then that shortens the window of opportunity in terms of time for the attacker to guess it. Otherwise, with quantum computing, with uh, much moder modern uh, machines, very fast machines these days, uh, they can guess what the password is and can break into that. Now, crypto key command. Milo, what is it? Spell it. Um, yeah, crypto key generate RSA. So, what is the default key length with RSA that uh, the prompt is telling me? 512 which is insecure. And therefore, what is uh, the minimum that I am asked to provide? Uh, 1024. Yes. Has the key been generated? Been generated? Um, yes. Yes, and yeah. we can say that by that OK message that you see at the end. If the, for any reason and that reason can be lack of the appropriate uh license on that machine because in order to create these uh generate these rsa key or many of these cryptographic functions in order to use them you should have right the correct cryptography license on that ios sometimes you you need to go and not sometimes always you need to go and buy them yeah so you see things here in simulator for free or in the lab for free. Don't think that the real life is like that. Yeah, your company needs to pay for any of these additional licenses on top of the standard license when they buy the machines. And then uh, for some 
systems they have to annually pay for the updates or upgrades otherwise makes it challenging so uh step l milo your name has l so go on um step l what say what the command is or first tell me what are we supposed to do here um step l says to block anyone for three minutes who fails to log in after four attempts within a two minute period okay and then the command for this is login block dash for 180 attempts for within 120. so block for 180 is it in minutes hours seconds milliseconds uh, seconds good and attempts how many failed attempts four and within the duration of how long those four should uh, happen 120 seconds so 120. if i enter in simple words if i enter a wrong password within three minutes as a two minutes sorry within two minutes four times wrong passwords then i'm going to be blocked for 180 seconds well doesn't seem realistic but which attack are we trying to thwart here? Milo. Um, what attack are we trying to what? Sorry. Which attack are we trying to stop here? Is it just a password attack? Password guessing attack, yeah. which is also known as brute force attack. Yeah. Chan, who are those two students who are supposed to present chapter one and two today? Raise your hand. So Leon, tell me, because chapter one and two are going to be studied by these lovely students today themselves because we don't have time for it. But you two that you have done your job, tell me which application can we use actual program that can guess the password for this if we don't use login block for command. What are the examples of password cracking applications or password guessing applications? Don't open up your slides, Luca. Look at my lovely eyes and give me answer. Anyone? Don't be full disappointment. One, Luca. John the Ripper. John the Ripper, Leon. Well done. Uh, John the Ripper. Can. And John the Ripper. Where can I find it? Fine. Google. No, a better solution. <laughs> you can find everything on Google. Kali Linux. Or chat GPT. Operating Kali systems. Linux. Kali Alexi, Linux. Good. So, and what if I want in 10 minutes to learn John the Reaper and provide a lab simulation, which is not copy pasted from anyone, and give it a go with brute force attack? on John, John the Reaper. Where can I go to learn that in 10 minutes? Google gives you everything. I'm talking about suitable resources, not just everything. In Google, you can find things that Leon has put up as well. Yeah, don't you differentiate between my tutorials and Leon's? LinkedIn Learning, which has for, been provided for you uh, for free. If you just put John the Reaper, Loads of example, practical ones. And in 10, 15 minutes, they tell you a good scenario for password guessing attacks. So don't wait for anyone to come and teach you these stuff. So I click on enter, and that is what's happening now. Now, Milo, continue and tell me how to, not Milo, let's move on to Salvatore. Hello. Hi, Salvatore. Hi. Tell me about this step now. Um, step M, right? Yeah. So it's um, configuring all the VRT lines for SSH access and use the local user profiles for authentication. Okay. So what should I do? Write line space VTI space zero space four. Why do I get error here? Because you milk spelled something. Pay attention. 
Let him think. Let him think. Let him think. Let him learn. Oh no, we type it. Tell me what to type. You have to go and um you have to enable. Enable what? Type EN and click enter. Type what? EN and then enter. I do that, but it's still line with UI. It does not work. And then config T. Yeah, because we are not in configuration, global configuration mode. Now, I put lit line VTY zero. What is the maximum? 16. If I put oh, 16. 15, 15, 15. Yeah, you have 16 maximum okay. VTY. Okay, what else? Then you put transport input SSH. So, transport input. Put question mark. What do I see here? I can have different profiles. Yeah, so keep practicing by putting question mark. Don't just blindly follow uh, the lab instruction sheet. Yeah, there is no learning in that. So if I put question mark there, I can see different options. What are they? All, none, SSH, and tell Yeah, but what are they? What? what do, why do we have different ones? So all you could have both SSH and Telnet connections, none as in no SSH or Telnet, and then SSH or Telnet either. Be because in few scenarios used rarely, you may allow Telnet for testing purposes for other things, but not usual scenarios. And then you can specify whether you just allow SSH or just Telnet or just both of them, or, and this or is important for me, you can have them in, in the order of priority. You may say SSH and then Telnet, meaning that if you have two connections, one with SSH, one with Telnet, always go with the SSH one. Yeah? So transport input SSH tells the VTY lines and this device, whatever it is, router switch firewall, that you know what, allow only SSH on this device. So Telnet should fail. And then I have login local. What does that mean, uh, Salvatore? Salvatore, you're muted. Not sure if you're talking. So the people who access the SSH have to log in? Everyone in order to access to anything digital should log in, be it your phone, be it your iPad, be it your PC, be it your router. What does login local mean? What does the word local mean? James. Yes. Login local, what does it mean? Um, I am not sure. Give me one moment and I shall what find are two, out. What are two categories? Look at my eyes instead of Google. What are two categories for checking, authenticating a user? for any of these protocols like SSH. Two methods that I have repeated twice so far. Uh, I had a student earlier told me, Vahid, you are a great lecturer, but can I give you some criticism? I said, go on. So sometimes you repeat one thing quite a lot. And I hope that the student now understands why. Um, is it triple A? Good. So two categories for configuration. One was when we ask someone else to become authenticator. And sometimes when we are using our own our own local database. How did I populate, James, my lo uh, local database for this scenario to be used? Where did I populate that database? 
Um, in which command? It would be the um, when you set the password, no? No. Why? Which password? Which which line? Which step? I'm not sure. Do you have the instructions? Do you know which step? Uh, Salvato. Yeah. Which step? So, Where did I populate um, my database on this device to be used locally now for authenticating SSH connection to this device? Send. Uh, was it step J? Which says, uh, so you did username. Uh, username you... secret. Yeah, when we have done that, I told you, remember? that we are starting to populate the local database to be used later as a login local mechanism of SSH rather than login triple A. So here, if I were you, I try to be a smart and I put login question mark. What are the other options that I have? I have login authentication or login local. And if I have login authentication, then I put question mark. I see the word, yeah? And that word means any word that I can put, any word that authenticates using triple A method list. Triple A can be put here. If you say login instead of local authentication and give the name of the server, triple A server, which is going to act as your authenticator. Then, as I said, SSH connections, remote connections will be authenticated against that server. But for the sake of this lab for now, we just go with login local. Now, set exec mute timeout to six minutes on VTY lines. Uh, Salvatore, what does that mean? Are you muted, I think? Salvatore. Yeah. What does that command do? It times it out after six minutes. Which means? After six minutes, it times out. Times out what? The VAT lines. Okay, can you explain what does that mean? Anyone? Uh, so, Adi. I'm not sure, but does that mean when the um, virtual interface have, uh, have been accessed and it has no activity for six minutes should? Good. So, no activity. We don't want to leave access forever open. Yeah? Told you earlier, one of the security fundamentals that you have learned so far, hopefully, is that shorten the window of opportunity. SSH is like a golden key to your network, to your business. As I said, in modern professional secure networks, you never allow any SSH, let alone coming and considering uh, configuring it. Why? Because if the guy passes SSH, he is into your network, with all the privileges, yeah? At least shorten that window of opportunity for them. Tell them that, you know what, if you are inactive for even a minute, two minutes, five, six minutes, whatever, I kick you out, yeah? Because if they really know what they have to do, what they are up to do, they just log in, do it, close it. They don't leave it open. So let's move on with Salvatore. Now, Salvatore, and by the way, this six or any number is in minutes, yeah? Don't confuse it with block four command, login block four command. That was in seconds. Here we are talking about minutes. How to know that this is about minutes? 
just put exec timeout question mark and it says timeout in minutes. Uh, Salvatore, what is the next step? Step O. It is saving to NVRAM. And what is the answer? Copy running config, startup config. And can I do that command here? Am I in the right mood to enter that command? No, I don't think so. Which mood should I be in? You should um exit. And what is this mute called? Uh, the command prompts. No. So we have three mutes. What is this mute called? I think this is just a uh, high privilege. So when you tap in. Yeah, but yeah, what right. is the exact name of the mute? I don't in? know. Anyone? Privileged exec mode. Privileged uh, exec mode. One. Yeah. yeah. So what is the command? I see. Yeah. Uh, Salvatore, what is the command that you, you've just said? So um, all the, yeah, I come back to you. So all the devices that we are working with, router, switches, firewalls, they are mainly working with two files. One is running config file for which you issue show running config and you see the content of that file. Another file, the second file, is a startup config file. The difference is this, running config at the very beginning of the scenario, when your device is booting up, be it router, switch, wireless access point, firewall, whatever, is going to be a copy of the startup config, which is stored in RAM memory. In other words, running config file is going to be the handy file that router or switch, whatever device, is using and keep referring to it, keeps referring to it, going to it, coming back, going to it, make some changes, coming back. All these commands that you have entered today, as soon as you enter them, it's going to change some characteristics of the running config file. So you enter enable secret, it goes to running config file, changes something. You say set password for this, it goes to running config, change a, a, pa a parameter or a, a factor there. However, if suddenly someone unplug, unplugs the device from the electricity outlet, then what happens is that the whole thing is gone, as you would expect with anything within RAM memory, random access memory. It's not saved as such. And it's there for the CPU to keep referring to it, not to leave it somewhere and go and come back later. And therefore, we have a secondary file, startup config, which I told you initially, your running config is going to be a co copy of that. Startup configuration file is going to be stored in NVRAM, standing for, for non-volatile memory, which basically means even if you reboot your machine, unplug it, it's going to still be there. And therefore, at the end of any configuration step or process, always copy or save the content of running into a startup, which in fact makes your solution permanent in a sense that if something goes wrong, you can always refer back to that copy stored in the startup config. And next time when you reboot, you don't need to redo all these steps again. Copy command, similar to Linux environment, has this structure, always the source and then destination. Here, the source is running config and the destination is startup config. So I copy from running into startup. Enter. Are you sure? Yes. I think even enter would do the job. And then that's it. Sorry? Diane, you can just press enter to go through. Yep. And now I have saved everything that I had into my startup config. Next step is 
to access the device using SSH. So, I'm going to close down this guy. Let's go to Is there next to terminal? Yeah, I want someone else to go through it. Thorn. You hear me? Yeah. Tell me, first of all, which one to come? Well, Leon just told us, but anyway, which one? Where to go to? Uh, is it um, PCA? The terminal uh, prompt. Yes, but where? Um, I'm not sure. Just. Put it on the next person sitting next to you. Steven. Who's very smart, yes. But a bit naughty at times. Can you hear me? Yep. Is it for step um, P? It is for a step P, last step. Just before oh. the break. Oh, um, you go on command prompt. You're going to command prompt and then? Then you type um, SSH slash question mark. So, command prompt, it's as if you go to your Windows machine and you just put CMD. Yeah? Don't get it confu confused with your terminal emulation software like PuTTY or things that we had before. With PuTTY, you can also establish SSH or Telnet or any session that you want. But here it wants to access the stuff from the command prompt. Okay, I put what? So, uh, sorry, Stephen? Um, SSH space slash question mark. A slash question mark. What does this command supposed to do? Um, I believe it will show the um, what's it called? The SSH connection. What does this command suppose? What is this command supposed to do? Uh, it will show the SSH connection to the router. So if I enter, what I see here? Um, it shows um, Cisco packet tracer SSH, and it shows the the target and the username. Luca. Similar to man command in Linux, similar to question mark on its own in iOS. Here with a slash question mark, so it's a DOS window thing, yeah? It gives you all the options with that command. Very simple. Yeah, it's a common sense. Compare it with other uh, iOS, sorry, with other operating systems. So it says that the usage should have a form of SSH. Minus L and then username. What was the username that I have put? I'm target. For, yes, what was the username that I have put for my simulation today while I was putting uh, the commands today? Was it Vahid? Yeah. yeah. And what was the password? So uh, the machine hang. Just wait with me. Wasn't it um, Vahid again? Like twice, Vahid, Vahid. Yeah, but bear with me. The machine freeze. So just put whatever username that you have put for yourself, and instead of target, put the IP address of the router. What is the IP address of the router that you should provide? Huh? I'm waiting for anyone. 
What is the IP address? What is the target? Remember, you are on the PC and using the underlying network, not the console connection. Not the console connection. Yes, you understand what I'm talking about. Not the console cable. You can even remove console cable for now because you're not using it anymore. Not using the blue line there, but using the underlying connection, you are trying to SSH through the switch. So from that uh, bottom route to that router. Therefore, your target is going to be IP address of your default gateway, which is the active interface on the router facing that subnet on which the PC is sitting. Yes? So I couldn't do it, it's freeze on my machine. So just put username and then the IP and click enter. Now you should be asked for the password. Which password? The username secret password. So you are authenticated against the local login. Raise your hand if you have done SSH and you are now into the router from the PC. Keep it raised and hold it firm like this so that I can see the hand. Good. Those of you who haven't done it, do it quickly. If you get error, because unlike these people, you haven't followed me step by step. I can't even close it. So, but that's fine. You can, you have tried it and it works. So, SSH dash L, put the username, and then put the secret. The secret is not going to be your console cable password, is not going to be your enable password. It's going to be the password that you have set for the username. Yeah, with the username command, username secret command. Let me see if I can. No, my machine is still freeze. Now it's coming back. Let me see. No. So. No, it doesn't work, but that's fine. You have tried it on your machine and it works. So I'm going to pause here for a break.